Welcome, everyone. This is actually the first time we're doing this, so bear with us if we hit any technical challenges. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to introduce myself. Hello, I'm Sabrina Ellis, and I lead product management for Android Consumer and Pixel Software. And I'm joined today by Mark and Flo, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. So, Mark. Hey, y'all. I'm Mark Risher. I work on product management for multi-device experiences at Android. How do we connect everything together so that you can get these journeys that kind of go throughout the home? Florian? Yeah, and I'm Florian. I also go by Flo. Uh, I sit in our platforms and ecosystems org, and I lead what's called our Image Equity Initiative, which is designed to make better and more fair experiences for people of color, especially those with darker skin tones in our camera and imagery tools. Um, Sabrina, what are we talking about today? Excited for this. <laughs> Thanks, Flo. And thank everyone for joining us. I know you're taking time out of a likely busy day, um, but let me just set the scene for the conversation that we'll be having today. Uh, first off, look, we're coming off of CES, which is focused on consumer electronics. And for us, we spend our days really thinking about the awesome software experiences that uh, we can build for consumers to really enjoy those uh, consumer electronics and devices. Uh, we wanted to share a little bit more about how we think about building these software experiences uh, with a real focus on connecting consumers with devices and, and enabling all of the, those devices as well as the choice that they can have. But we also want to make sure that we're developing with equity in mind. And this is something that's really important to us. Uh, because one of the things we realized at Google is that we look at our industry, the tech industry, we're often lagging in terms of equity and inclusion. And we hope that we can play a big part in, in fixing that and building features and products that are really for everyone. So I'm glad to have Mark and Flo here as the experts today uh, in these areas. Uh, but let's start with thinking about uh, connecting users with uh, uh, consumer devices, right? We're seeing all kinds of new devices in the market. Uh, we've seen some awesome new gadgets at CES. Uh, I think it can be confusing. It can be intimidating. What works with what and how do I set them all up? I don't know. So, Mark, you're the expert. How are you going to help us? Make yeah, it's been, <laughs> you're right. I mean, there's so much out there. I wasn't able to travel to CES, but I've been, you know, click and refresh every few hours looking at all of the great stuff coming out. And we know exactly, like you said, people are wondering, like, you know, looks nice on the show floor. Will it work in my home? And we take that totally to heart. We've been really looking at how do you get these awesome new gadgets that are coming out set up connected to each other, connected to your house, so that they really allow you to get on and, and do great things in your life. Uh, so I've seen like a big mix. There's been a ton of smart home things, you know, ranging from, I saw there's like smart front doors, there's smart faucets, uh, there's a lot of uh, trackers for pets, like wearables, so you can find out if your dog is getting enough exercise. Uh, you know, we make fun of some of these, but there's clearly a desire out there. There's clearly a lot more things that people want. And what we've been looking at is, you know, how do, how do you easily and effortlessly get them set up, not have to install a separate app, not have to hunt around with a paperclip to poke into some little magical hole to get it into setup mode, but instead just like get on with your life. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And you're know, actually curious, like what are some stuff that you all saw? Like Flo, anything you saw that was cool? Yeah, I mean, I come to my work as a photographer and a uh, wannabe artist, if you will. And so seeing that Samsung has this NFT aggregator on their TV screens was super interesting to me because, you know, I'm not an NFT expert, but everybody always says, well, why would I buy this thing if I can't show it somewhere? And the idea that we now have these surfaces in our homes where we get to live with these pieces and show them is really exciting to me. Yeah, totally. And I think like surfaces, that plural is the key, which is you don't want to you know, buy this bespoke piece of art and have it just in one place. Just like you don't want to only be able to watch movies in you know, one device. You might be you know, on the road, you might be at home, you might be upstairs, downstairs. Getting that to flow is part of what we're trying to do. No pun intended there. <laughs> Sabrina, what do you see? <laughs> Uh, you know, there are a couple of things I think that really piqued my fancy. I think one is um, when you look at BMW had this, this color changing car 
And for me, yeah. you know, I like to match everything to my outfit. I mean, the idea that I wouldn't have to pick the color of my car and be wedded to that for a few years, the fact that I could change it uh, easily every day, I, you know, we built uh, in, that into Android with Material U. So I'm calling this Material U for auto. So that one's one of them that I thought was pretty cool. Personalization at the car. Yeah. That's right. Um, the other one I thought was really neat was just Samsung had this really portable projector. And I, look, we have portable projectors. We've, oh, we've had projectors. I don't know if they've been focused on the portability and how you would use it in different places. I, I love remodeling. I love home design. So thinking about this and how it might change some of those factors, like maybe we're going to see homes with just really big walls that are more blank because you know that that's going to be a, a you know, a, a canvas for people to project on, or uh, maybe people are going to pick lighter paint colors. Maybe people are going to have furniture that helps them lounge because they're going to be projecting on the ceiling. I just think it really opens up a lot of concepts and home design that that are newer and uh, and fun. Right. Yeah. And I know, I mean, we've talked about we're, we're all binging quite a lot these days and watching things and being able to see that like in each room and, and get them all together is, is part of what we're doing. Uh, you know, connected to that is just like the different peripherals. It's not just that projector, that TV, because you obviously got to hear it. You know, we did stuff, you know, obviously with fast pair that um, you can see it, for example, on the, the Pixel Buds, our, our headphones, but also a whole bunch of other brands of headphones that instead of hunting around to get into setup mode, we have a nice clear screen that pops up that says, would you like to set up these headphones and connect them to your phone? And we just announced we're bringing that to the Google TV as well, not only because it makes it easier to connect to your TV, but also we can then do smart switching. So let's say you're watching a movie and you get a phone call, your headphones switch over to connect to the phone. You can then have your call. When you hang up, they automatically switch back to the you know, movie picking up where you left off. So that kind of thing, that's about multiple devices, you know, working better together to let you get done what you're really expecting and working better for everyone because there's so many different types of devices. You know, there's some out there who would have you buy everything from one company with one, you know, logo sitting on the back of it. But we know the world's not really like that. Like the world's messy, people make choices and we want our devices to work better together for everyone. And I think that, that everyone is kind of like, you know, flow, it's, it's kind of some of the stuff you really helped us focus on as a company of like, you know, how does everyone really mean literally everyone? No, I think I think that's right. I mean, I think as we're designing the products, we need to think about the people that are using them and that they're coming from different perspectives and and different starting places. So how do we make sure that they can all enjoy them? Um, you know, one area that we have been focused on for the past few years is thinking about how digital photography is experienced by consumers with different skin tones, right? Flo, you're the expert in this area. And I love hearing you give the history of, you know, equity or, or really lack thereof in digital photography and why it's so important for us at Google to, to take a leadership role here um, and, and the opportunity that we have for helping the overall industry and thinking about this in the future. So I'm gonna hand it off to you. Yeah, thank you, Sabrina. I mean, I feel very lucky to be able to try to affect this issue from uh, the seat of Google because we have that path to affecting this at scale. But this work is very personal to me, you know, as a black man and a person of color who has a family with many different skin tones in it uh, and knowing firsthand that not everybody shows up the same way in all of those images. Um, when we talk about image equity, I think it's important to frame this. We mean this cross-company initiative um, to make more equitable experiences for people of color, especially those with darker skin tones, in all of our camera and imagery tools. And that manifested uh, last fall in the form of launching Real Tone on the Pixel 6 camera and in Google Photos. But if I zoom out for a second, you know, there's sort of two prongs to this, right? At an industry level, this is important because we're dealing with maybe a real reckoning moment, right? Who gets to build these tools and whom are we building for? And how do we make sure that when certain people are having a worse experience more often that we're able to correct for that? But at the Google level, um, one of my favorite colleagues of ours at Google, Annie Jean Baptiste, leads our product inclusion efforts. And that is really expanding that notion of everyone when we think about gender, race, ability, age, and ensuring that those products work for everyone. So I feel like the image equity work is just one piece of that much bigger puzzle at Google. I think that's right. Look, you mentioned our launch last fall. Um, actually, can you describe some of those, some of those, the technology behind that launch and how we were able to drive difference? 
Absolutely. So when we talk about real tone, um, there are sort of different components to the tech. The first thing to understand as we think about computational photography is that so many adjustments to the image are happening at the moment of capture now that get us to these amazing pictures we take on our phones. And one of the most important things that we do is see whether there are faces in an image so that we can then make good decisions about what we do with those faces. But again, if we look at the imbalance here, uh, it has tended to be the case that darker skin tones, especially darker faces, um, sometimes are not apparent to the camera. And so we did a lot of work on improving our face detection algorithms such that we're not only seeing a greater diversity of faces, but we're seeing them more frequently in a range of lighting conditions. For example, if you have a really strongly backlit image or a high dynamic range, we're still able to see those faces. And from there, the next question is, well, once you see the face, what do you do with it, right? How do you render it? And this was one of my favorite parts about this process is getting to bring in um, creative heroes of mine personally, and I'm sure to many in our audience, um, photographers, cinematographers, colorists, directors who are celebrated for the bodies of work over their career and beautifully and accurately rendering people of color in their work uh, and having them sit down with our product and engineering teams and talk directly about what is the right range of exposure values for somebody with a darker skin tone? How do we make sure that we're not over brightening them, but we're not also leaving them, you know, so to speak in the dark and um, not getting some of that richness and detail out of the skin? Or what is the right tone range for us to think about in auto white balance? Um, how do we sure, be sure that we're not over cooling or over warming skin? And so seeing that direct feedback loop, you know, Mark, you talk about better together. It's not just the product story. It's also who we're collaborating with in building these products. And so working with someone like an Ava Burkowski or a Joshua Kissy or a Dion Ivory or an Adrian Raquel, this tremendous list of collaborators we've had and having them directly influence the product uh, and seeing where that landed was incredible. And I think also getting that flywheel going where the product and engineering people building these things then start to understand, you know, hey, wait, like building for everyone, this is what it means, this is what it looks like. Because, you know, there's a human nature of people build stuff for themselves. And, you know, we've got structural problems, we've got sometimes, you know, a too little diversity in the people that are building. And then they're making these subjective decisions out of ignorance that you've really helped open. I know across my team, like a lot of people are now thinking very differently when they decide that a product is ready to go to market. And to put a human piece to that, right? Because Mark, you're pointing to the people, right? I think actually the, the biggest thing for me in this whole process was people. And by people, I mean both our consumers and the teams. Yep. Um, hearing some of our own engineers understand in this process that their responsibility is not just to build technology, but actually to help people determine their self-image and their self-confidence and their yeah. self-worth because wow. pictures are the way that we exist to each other so much today was extremely moving. But then also on the consumer side, you know, if you look at some of the side-by-sides that we have up on the Real Tone website right now, um, one of our subjects, I was in this shoot in Houston and watching this person react to seeing the improvement in the technology and really understanding that it's not her fault. Right? Right. It's not her skin that's the problem. It is the technology that's the problem and that we actually have the ability not only to control it, but to augment it specifically for people who have not historically been served is uh, just tremendous. Yeah, I mean, so much. I, I'm thinking of family photos that, you know, in my family span a pretty broad spectrum as well. And like, you can't get everyone balanced in, you know, the old photos, but now you can. And that makes such a big difference. Exactly. And I will say, you know, um, for us, this work is never done. We don't pretend that the launch of Real Tone is the end. Uh, it's definitely a beginning. And as well, I look also, the it's future, not just in the camera, right? You have it in photos so people can reach it more broadly, right? Absolutely. Uh, working on our image editor, the auto enhance feature in Google Photos to ensure that no matter where you're taking your picture, to your earlier point, right, whether it's on Pixel or another device, that the editing experience is able to bring you back to a more fair and equitable image as well. Yeah. Uh, and we're definitely going to keep investing in some of that scaling. You know, the next natural step here for us to think about as an ecosystem is, well, how do we help bring this to more players in the Android space where we know mm -hmm. we have a lot of users of color not just in the United States, but around the world. Um, but Sabrina, I want to ask you, you know, obviously that's only one piece of how we're thinking about the future of Android. What do you see as uh, coming next for Android more broadly this year? Yeah, thanks, Flo. I, I see a couple big areas that we'll want to focus on. I mean, one, if we actually just look at the phone space, and there, there's an overriding theme of just personalization and self-expression, 
that I'm seeing across. And the two areas that I'm seeing uh, in the next year that we'll be focusing on, and one is just phones alone. You see it where people are wanting different kinds of uh, foldable devices, wanting some different form factor changes. Um, and if, if you unfold those foldables, often they're turning into a larger format that people have different expectations for. Is it like a tablet? Do I want a stylus? All of those things. And I think that's something that we'll be investing in to make sure that we're allowing for that greater degree of flexibility Flexibility and personalization of use. Um, the other area is, you know, bringing back to what we're talking about with CES, there are so many devices out there and people want to make them all smart. And there's so many capabilities that are coming from that. Uh, I think it's up to us to help people enable that, that, that we can unlock both in terms of uh, the manufacturers, the creators themselves, uh, and also the consumers to enjoy. From a consumer perspective, there's a huge self-expression, right? Like I always say, like not everyone is going to want a square watch. Not <laughs> everyone right. is going to want a pretty big ring. I've tried them to manage their fitness. It, it was a little too big for my hand, right? So we're going to need that type of, of, um, of flexibility and personalization. And I, I think that it's up to us to help people build that. I think also just the points that Mark was saying, setting these things up, building up the platforms to do them, that unlocks the manufacturers for building all kinds of creative things. I always say, someone's going to build that awesome, cool, smart hair clip that big companies may not feel like that's a big enough market, but that is the, someone is going to want to do that. Someone There's is going to want to do that. smart hair dye thing at CES. Did you see that one? No, but maybe I need to try that. It may, maybe, yeah. Will it help my highlights be smarter? That'll be fun. It'll make your highlights I just, after the car. I, yeah, I, I exactly highlights car clothes. They're all together. Okay. I mean, I, I do think that that's that's the tone, right? It's all about that personalization and making sure that all of our products work for each person so that they get to really benefit from them. So that's kind of what I see as the overall future. Yeah. And I don't know if either of you want to add anything to that. I mean, the only one that occurs to me is uh, it's also it, it's about multiple people and like, you know, everyone as a plural because a lot of what we're seeing is that these devices are not just used by one person. You know, your phone, you put your phone in your pocket, but uh, you know, a TV stays up for everyone in the house, a door, a refrigerator, even a smart hair clip, you know, might be something that's shared around the household. And that's something that tech hasn't really supported in the past before. So part of that everyone mission for me is also these communal devices, things that are deliberately shared. How do we make that work really well? How do we make that really nice and easy and seamless and intuitive for, you know, for people around the world. And I would add to that, Mark, you know, one of the things that's really surprised me diving into the image equity and real tone work is how many different camera products there are, tools yeah. that see you, right? right? And so thinking more broadly, not just about the cell phone camera, but thinking about the home security camera, yeah. our video conferencing tools, right? Yeah. Um, our YouTube creator products. What are all of the different surfaces where we can start to affect a more equitable future for all of the users that are involved in this and also thinking about some of the underlying technology, right? Skin tone classification. I just saw that Pantone um, has released a new tool that's designed to help um, make smartphone displays more accurately recognize skin tones across the industry. Yeah. And I view that as such an important step, right? It can't just be us. It has to be every player in the space driving these issues forward. So um, cool to see, you know, community rally, if you will, at the end. Yeah, I've, I've heard you say this is not a competitive mission. Like this is something that we really are trying to lead the whole industry because we see it as so important. And it's so clear, like our users, the people here on this call right now are telling us like, you know, here's me, make it work for me. Look at me. I want to feel seen. So I'm glad that we can do this. Listen, with that, I mean, I think we've had a lot of fun talking about uh, some of these different topics. They're clearly important to us. And uh, and then we hope that, you know, it relates to you as well. And uh, this is the first of our future com conversations. We hope that you'll join us and that uh, we look forward to talking and uh, hearing from you more. Yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. For Thanks, everyone.